Folks, you would never believe where I'm at. I'm like pinching myself. I cannot believe I had to go through a lot of checks, level four or five or six screenings, but we made it. We're here in Washington, D.C. at the Navy Yard, and we got an awesome guest. I told you I was going to bring the heat. We came up 90, 95 South, D.C., here we are. The next voice you'll hear is Admiral Nancy LaCour. OpenWorks is Baltimore's largest makerspace, offering access to tools ranging from 3D printers to welder and training in how to use them. OpenWorks also offers affordable studio space, a coffee shop, and fun-free events throughout the year. But OpenWorks is more than a public workshop. It's a community of creative professionals, students, seniors, entrepreneurs, and makers of all kinds. Check out the website at www.openworksbmore.org or Instagram at open underscore works underscore bmore for class schedules, membership options, and more. No Picks After Dark is sponsored by Snug Books, an independent bookstore serving Northeast Baltimore and beyond. In addition to featuring new books for all ages, the store also carries cards, stationery, gifts, games, and more. Visit snugbooks.com to shop online, learn more about the store, read our latest newsletter, and find a calendar of events, or come browse the store in person. Snug Books is located at 4717 Harford Road, next to Zeke's Coffee in Hamilton, Laurelville. There is free parking behind the store and open hours are Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Welcome to the No Picks of the Dark Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Dante. You know it. I told you guys that we're in D.C. I told you D.C. is hopping, and guess what? I am in a very, very special place. I'm in, at the Navy, the Navy headquarters. Like I can't believe like it's. I'm here in Navy Yard, D.C. I cannot believe it. And we're here for a special occasion. Baltimore Fleet Week's coming up. And I mean, can you believe it? Fleet Week's coming up. It's been gone for a little bit for that crazy pandemic. But hopefully all these people will be back and enjoying the town. And we can invite sailors to town, learn a little bit more about these ships coming in. But we have a special guest. It's Admiral, the Admiral, Nancy LaCour. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Aaron? I'm great, great. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for getting all, through all the security checks. <laughs> oh, you know what? They asked me for my first, last name, my date of birth, and everything. I was sweating a little bit about it. Well, you made it through. Hey, you must be okay. <laughs> I, whew, but thank you so much. I mean, uh, I was really appreciate your team reaching out. I'm really excited for the Baltimore audience to listen to this episode. I know we're really, really excited about Fleet Week. I know that my second biggest audience is Washington, D.C., and third is uh, Northern Virginia, and then so on. So very excited for this uh, episode. So let's talk, tell me a little bit about you. Like, what do you do here? What, what, like, what do you do with the, F with the Navy and whatnot? <laughs> so technically, I'm a helicopter pilot. Okay. Um, in my current job, though, I don't do much flying. I'm the Commandant of Naval District Washington, which means I have oversight of uh, a few of the Navy installations around the area. Oh, wow. Okay. So how long have you been with the Navy? 32 years in the Navy. Okay, like a little bit of low rewind. So, where are you originally from? Like, where are you from originally? I'm from Albany, New York. Okay, okay, so yep. upstate New York. Yep. And you, so you went to upstate New York. Did you always, was it your upbringing for the military? Was the military in your family? Not really. No, um, we grew up pretty stable. I mean, my dad was born in Albany. He you know, grew up his whole life there, stayed there as an adult. But my dad uh, went in the Navy for five years out of college. And so that's sort of where I think it started for me. Oh, wow. So, that was a, was that like an inspiration where you're like, I kind of want to do this, something I really want to do, or? Kind of like my dad was like, I really want you to do this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a little wow. bit of encouragement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, did you, you went to college at Holy Cross? I did. Okay. Yep. And what did you major there when you were there? I was a history major, but okay. I was, that's where I started the Navy and ROTC there. Okay. So. so when, did you have a first assignment going somewhere after college or did you go anywhere after or? Flight school. Oh, wow. How was that? Top Gun? I did see Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. That, I mean, that's was, just amazing yeah. to me. Football I mean, on the beach and yeah. Wow. So were you in San Diego or were you in Norfolk? No, flight school's down in, uh, in Pensacola, Florida. Okay. That's where you start. I did end up in San Diego for as an instructor um, and training too. So, this, so I guess, you know, going through the career path, 
when you start started, did you think that you did you want to fly a plane and a helicopter? Did you want to do that or? I didn't even want to go in the Navy when I first started. Really? <laughs> no. I mean, my dad was like, "Why don't you see if you can get a scholarship?" Um, so I applied for the ROTC scholarship and got it. And uh, I really, I, I didn't really know much. Like I said, we we grew up stationary. I had no recollection of him being in the Navy. Okay. I was born after that. Um, so I was like. I'll give it a try, you know, because you get your first year for free. Right. You can walk away and you got one year of college for free. Um, and then it just sort of stuck. And uh, when it came time to decide, you know, when you're a senior, you know, what would you like to do? Um, flying seemed like the, to me to be the most exciting option. So when did you feel like after that first year, when did you realize, like, I'm going to do this? Like, there was, a, was it like midway through semester? You're like, eh, I don't know if I really want to stick with this or... This Definitely probably half, at least halfway through the first year that I finally was like, okay, this isn't so bad. What was the other option? If you didn't take this route, what would you be doing? I would have probably not even gone to Holy Cross. I would have gone to a different college and probably would have gone into medicine. Okay, okay. So you, so you go and you go to Pensacola. You, yeah. You're on the beach. You're doing, you're flying how to fly helicopters. Yeah. What an experience. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, yep. did it, like, was it like, have you ever been in a helicopter before that? Nope. Wow. <laughs> okay, so like, what was it, if you remember, what was like your experience of that first ride on the helicopter? So they first teach you on fixed wing. So you do some training on a fixed wing airplane. Everybody starts like that. Okay. And then they transition you either to jets or you know, stay fixed wing or go to helicopters. So um, but that very first helicopter ride is definitely different from anything else you've ever experienced. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I was talking with a couple people. They were like, you know, you go, and then you go up this way. And I was Sounds like a roller coaster. Sounds like a little bit to me. There is a little bit of that, yeah. A little bit, a little nervous. But it's nice. It's nice flying because you're close to everything. Okay, so you know, from there, you so you went to Pensacola, then you went out to San Diego after Correct. that. Correct. Yep. And then from there, where did you end up going to after that? Then I went back to Norfolk, Virginia, okay. and that's where I did my first uh, at sea tour. So you know, flew helicopters off a ship, okay. went on a deployment. How was that? Just, it's just rolling out off the Best ship? Best tour you'll ever have in the Navy. Okay, okay. Yeah. Did you go anywhere as far as... So we did a deployment to the Mediterranean, went over into the, um, into the Gulf, uh, and then I did a second deployment that was up in the North Atlantic. Wow. What is your favorite memory from, like, when you first started doing all this? So, like, is there a favorite thing that you, like, stuck out that you can just t give us a little insight of? Like, you're like, wow, like, this was... Look back and you tell stories to family and friends. Is there any stories... It's definitely, um, I think the one thing that sticks out in, in more of a bad way is the nighttime flying at, on a ship, oh. right? So that's always <laughs> a little bit hairy because, I mean, it's when you're out in the middle of the ocean on a ship, it's dark. You can't tell up from down, um, and you know, the ship is pretty small. So that's always a little bit hairy. I think the best memories, uh, I can't pick one, but they were all, you know, once you pulled into port <laughs> and you're hanging out with all your friends and getting to see, you know, different cities. It's a pretty, pretty neat experience. Wow. You know, let's give you a little quick background. My dad was in the Air Force, so he was in Germany, and he always was like, you know, I got to take you guys over here and show the world. And he, he didn't go to college. He went right to the Air Force yeah. and then came back into college in Baltimore. So, but he just always talks about how he, he, we still have this globe in the house that he bought in Germany, which is still the most fascinating thing I've never seen anywhere else in the U.S., he was like, you can't get this anywhere else in America. In, in America. He's like, just he loved being over in Germany. Just was treated differently. He just really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, and it also teaches you to appreciate what we have back here too. Yes, it definitely does. It definitely does. So, my, I definitely, I definitely grew up in, a, in a, my dad make your bed up, make sure everything <laughs> is tidy and things of that nature. So that was something that I will definitely take away from that. But definitely, like, so from that point on. How do we get to D.C.? How do we even get here? How do we get to the modern day? Well, it was a long journey. Long journey? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're here. A lot of years, yep. Okay. Yeah, so I spent 10 years on active duty flying um, helicopters, and then um, then I transitioned to the reserve. I left active duty and went reserve. Um, my husband was also an active duty helicopter pilot. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we wanted to have a family, so we figured one helicopter pilot in the family at a time was probably enough. So um, I, I've been in the reserve since then, so. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, and uh, mobilized a couple times in the reserve. Oh, wow. Did we ever mobilize for any wars or anything like that? Anytime? Uh, I went to Afghanistan. I spent okay. a year in Afghanistan. Oh, okay. Um, how was that? Were you flying helicopters over there? No, during? I was not flying helicopters. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was uh, I was at the headquarters in Kabul. At what we called key leader engagement. Okay. So trying, to, trying to help our leaders work with the leaders in Afghanistan. I love it. Folks, we'll be right back at these messages. We're going to talk about Fleet Week, Baltimore Fleet Week, talk about what's going on 
we just wanted to learn a little bit of background and learn so many things. Flying at night, helicopters, that's a little different. Very excited to talk about Fleet Week. We'll be right back, these messages. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help provide nutritious food for a family in need. Because eating healthy shouldn't be a luxury. It can help someone with housing challenges and be a catalyst for a new beginning. Because a safe space to call home is the foundation for building a better future. Give today. Spark something bigger. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road, open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. The No Picks After Dark podcast is proudly partnered with Maggie's Farm. Located at 4341 Hartford Road, Maggie's Farm offers a unique dining experience with delicious handcrafted cocktails and mouth-watering cuisine from falafels to scallops and everyone's favorites, honey sriracha cauliflower wings. Open for dinner from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday, and for brunch, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. with delectable chicken and waffles, shrimp and grits, biscuits and gravy, and more. Check out Maggie's Farm on Instagram and Facebook for daily and weekly food specials. And folks, we are back at the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. This has been an amazing interview with Admiral LaCour. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. All right. I was I was nervous. I was. You didn't see me sweating earlier. You're making me nervous. I was too. sweating right now. I'm like, <laughs> whoo! But thank you so much again for your time. And again, thank you for your team to reaching out to us. It's just really an amazing experience. Well, it's and, a great opportunity for us. And it, I, it's mind boggling. Like I don't know if it just came out. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, won Best of Baltimore again. For, awesome. ball, for three years in a row, best of Baltimore through the readers. And, um, well, I'm honored to be here. No, hey, it's an honor for me to be here, really. I'm, I, I'm blown away by everything and just top class coming in here and having everybody walk us in and show us around. It's been an amazing experience. So I want people to really know that. It's really appreciate you guys. So let's talk a little bit about Fleet Week. Baltimore is back. Back, finally. How excited are you? We are very excited. The okay. staff, um, you know, I'm new here. I've only been here two months, but as soon as I walked in the door, that's the first thing everybody was talking to me about is we got Fleet Week back. You know, they experienced virtual Fleet Week, which is something, but, you know, certainly not what we really wanted it to be. So the staff who's been here for several years, they're super excited. You know, I've been to Fleet Week, you know, I, like San Diego, I think they have it out there, don't they have Fleet yes. Week? Yeah. And I, cause my, uh, I have friends that live out there and whatnot. And I remember going to Baltimore Fleet Week and way back, and I was like, this is the most amazing experience. Mm -hmm. You know, just sailors coming in and boat, and you're just like, just want to talk with them and say, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. You know, just, you're very appreciative. And we're, just, I'm Baltimore excited for you guys to come back into Baltimore and hang out for the week. So, what, so what, when you got here and everybody's talking about it, what are your thoughts? Like, what are your thoughts about when you hear Fleet Week? What pops in your mind, Fleet Week? Um, it's a community outreach, right? It's, you know, we're bringing the Navy to you. We're getting to know you. By you, I mean Baltimore, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Baltimore gets to know the Navy. So it's kind of a win-win scenario. Do a lot of sailors sign up for this? Or is it like a mandatory? Or do well, sailors the, the sailors on the ships, they come with the ships, okay. right? They're assigned to the ships. And the ships that who get assigned up here, so they will bring their crew. Um, and it's a fantastic opportunity for them because I'm sure you know, a lot of them probably have not been to Baltimore. And so, you know, they get it, you know. Five, six, seven days to, to learn about Baltimore. And what ships are coming into Baltimore? Do you have... Go ahead. Yeah, so we have five U.S. ships that are going to be okay. here. And then there's also um, like five other uh, international ships that will be in port too. Oh, a wow. Coast Guard ship and then a couple um, Canadian and uh, Royal Navy. And 
and Mark. Oh, so. wow. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That is, I wonder, I mean, does this planning take two years or a couple years for all these? Pretty much. As soon as you finish one, you start working on the, on the next one. It's a lot of coordination. It's um, you know, with the city um, and then with sponsors and, and then with the Navy because we have to work on um, – at the ship schedules and making sure that we can meet our mission while we're also being able to do this outreach. Uh, yeah, so I just remember like my parents always like, we gotta go down to fleet. Yeah. My dad was like, we gotta go down there. And he was just, that was one of the biggest things for him was gotta go down there and pay your respects and you know, just yeah. pre be very appreciative. And I know that my my kids and I will be going down there. Great. Um, just because they've never been on a ship. They don't, you right. know, they, you know, and I, I would, you know, I want to show them that experience and whatnot. What do you? What have you told the sailors about Baltimore? Has it, have you guys told them about? Well, anything? everybody knows it's all about crabs when you get to Baltimore. Uh oh, there we yeah, go. So they've already heard that. There we yeah. go. So I mean, I think you can't beat the Inner Harbor, right? Right. So lots of opportunities for them to just get off the ships on foot, and so much to experience in that immediate area. So it'll be great. They'll also be out doing some community projects as well. I love that. Any can you name of any of that are going to be happening or? No, I don't know list? that we've solidified solidified that schedule yet, but they'll be out doing some uh, stuff to kind of help the community. Now, one thing about this podcast, and the people can tell you about any, about this show, is we like to highlight positive things. And what you guys are doing, coming into the community and really uplifting, it's going to be great for the city of Baltimore. You know, a lot of things have been rough this past couple of years, and, you know, we've lost a lot of people through COVID and other things in nature. And I think the city really needs something like this because we just got fireworks back recently. Yeah. For, you know, I mean, <laughs> right, simple right, I things like that yep. that we take for granted. Right, but Bene- be- being able to gather crowds together right. and yeah, and just to have a crowd of people coming, you know, I know I'm just listening to the airwaves and just now people are talking about it on social media, the Twitter right. chatters out there. Um, visit Baltimore, uh, a partner that I work with, uh, volunteers are already like filing up for the, filing up for the thing. I know they have a couple events that people have already. We're gonna be we're gonna volunteer for that event. And people are really excited for you guys to come. So I just wanted to let you know that that's just really very, just very exciting. That's great to hear. Yeah. You know, great. we're things that like, you know, if I'm a person that's listening to this, watching this to look for, or what should I look for when I go there and go to Fleet Week? Is there anything that we can't miss or we should definitely check out? Well, I mean, the big things for us are, it's going to be the fleet, which is the ships, right? Okay. And, and then we also have um, like helicopters and airplanes coming over too, over to Martin State Airfield. Okay. Are you guys doing any flyovers this year? We are. Okay. Yeah, every day there'll be some flyovers, um, and then there's tours on board all the ships. Um, so lots of opportunity to actually get a, you know hands-on experience as to, or eyes-on experience to what what the Navy's all about. And it starts on what date does it start? Seventh of September goes okay. through the twelfth. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I'm excited. I mean, again, I mean, you Top Gun, you said Top Gun in the plane. You know, I mean, who doesn't like planes flying? I'm getting That's like right. a little kid right over here now. Yep. I'm getting excited. <laughs> But uh, I'm really excited for this experience for the Baltimore and Baltimore surrounding areas. I know a lot of people will be down there very excited when you guys can get there. So and then with that, like just I guess the biggest thing for me is like just for the audience will be they're just very excited for this opportunity just to be there and see the ships and meet these people from different countries and yes. learn about yep. their ships. And, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how many people have actually been on the ship before. Right. And like you get to see a great opportunity. You get to see get everything board, yeah. down there, you know. Yeah. So, what would you say? Tell somebody who is watching this interview right now. What would you want them to walk away with from this interview of us discussing? Like, what do you want them, the main thing for them walking away from this? I want them to be excited, and to, to be planning right now that they're going to go down there and get on some of those ships and watch the planes fly over and talk to some of the sailors and learn about the, what the Navy does. I think, yeah, and I really, and I, you know what? I don't think a lot of people know that Top Gun is Navy. I don't think that's I, right. I really don't <laughs> yeah, think you're probably people know, right. I don't yep. think they do. Right. So I think that will be definitely a really good point that'll be made. Will there be people talking, like doing the tours, like it's a walking yes. tour, talking yep. tours? Absolutely. And it's kid friendly, obviously, because everybody wants to bring their Very kids kid down, friendly. Yes. down there and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, great opportunity for us because who knows what little kid might walk on board one of our ships and be like, you know, I want to be in the Navy and that could be our next admiral. Um, do you guys pick a city every year, or is it Baltimore, or is it different cities, or how do you guys pick? We do multiple um, every year. There's multiple okay. different fleet weeks. but All right. And you oversee the you oversee I oversee the event? this one, Baltimore. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. You're the region for this region? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Lucky yeah. me. I, I know who to call now. Yeah, you do. I know who to call yeah, now. you do. Yeah. But when you come in town, if you want a crab cake, let me know. I will I will you know. take you to the best crab cake place in Baltimore. I'm not going to say the name of it. 
But yeah. <laughs> can't say the name because then free I, advertising. I, I, advertising. Yeah. We have yeah. free advertising, but yeah. uh, we will get you a good crab cake. Sounds good. Now crabs, you can go many different places, but good crab cake, got you. All right. But I'll hold you to that one. Quick speed round. I always ask people all a quick speed round, okay? So if you um, come to Baltimore, are you going to do crabs or crab cakes? Which one you, what do you going to prefer? Crab cake. Okay, crab cake. Snowballs or ice cream? Ice cream. Not snowball. Snowball? Oh, we got to get you a snowball in Baltimore. At Custard. It's, that's a Baltimore thing. Okay. Get, I will try. You gotta it's going to be hard a, to beat ice cream. I know. <laughs> it's a Baltimore thing. That is such a Baltimore thing. And what is the best advice you've ever received? Um, I guess I probably should say join the Navy was the best advice because obviously that worked out okay. But um, I think it's get comfortable being uncomfortable. Right, because the more you know, the more you, you're in, and the more you do, um, you're put in situations where you're not always comfortable, and and it's okay because those are the times when you grow. And where can we go online? Is there anywhere we can figure out all this information at? Yeah, uh, Maryland Fleet Week. Okay. Um, whether that's on the social media or uh, you know on the web, I think it's all Mar Maryland Fleet Week. Okay, yeah. I, I will retweet and I'll repost. Great. And I know we don't do TikTok, but I'll put it on TikTok also. <laughs> I know, do TikTok, but. <laughs> but we'll definitely re we'll definitely put it out there for you guys because we're very excited and Baltimore's really excited. And I know people are excited just for that week to happen, and we're going to be it's probably it'll be the hottest week of the year, probably 100 degrees out there. But I'll say that. the humidity, is nothing, <laughs> nothing like Baltimore humidity, nothing like it. But we really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come on No Picks Better Podcast. Your team has been amazing. This has been top 10 just trips up to D.C. and we've really enjoyed this. Thank you um, for coming. Thanks for uh, helping us get the word out and uh, crab cake. Will do. All right. Folks, love, peace, we're out.